Hi, my name is Edmund. I'm a graduate of Harvard University, one of Robert Langdon's most successful students, and a pretty famous futurist. My new discovery is going to throw a flaming spear into the hornet's nest of religion. They will want to bury this information, not to broadcast it. This announcement will not only shake religion's foundation, it will shatter them. I'm Bishop Valdespina. I'm an important figure in the Catholic Church in Spain, and also a confidant of the current King and Prince of Spain. The Kirsch has been speaking out against organized religions for years now, and I've been speaking about the dangers of technology and its effects on the youth and the world. It strays us away from the path that God created. You were the young man who predicted the collapse of the European Union, resurrected it, and proclaimed yourself similar to Christ. Am I correct? I admit I was young. Sir, what I'm going to show you today must be kept in complete secrecy. I'm going to show you a rough edit of the announcement that I plan to release in the next few months. I want to gain insight on how it will be received by those who it affects the most. Okay, please follow me. Modern art, I'm trying to love you. I truly am. It's just like old times. A love for the classics, but little interest in the contemporaries. The great Edmund Kirch, always making an entrance. How's it been? Robert, it's been a while. How are you? Oh, you know the usual. But tell me, what is it that you've been up to? The talk of the town, the way everyone looks at you. You've really outdone yourself this time. <laughs> that, my friend, will have to wait. Forgive me, Robert, I have to go prepare for tonight. Meet me in an hour downstairs. Oh, yeah. For now, take this headset and enjoy. Maybe you'll learn a thing or two about the new generation. Yeah, thank you. Well, good luck for the presentation. Good evening, and welcome to the Guggenheim Bilbao. My name is Winston, and I'm honored to be your guide this evening. Mr. Langdon. Can you hear me? Is your headset working? I'm sorry, what? Hello? I thought you were recording. I didn't realize I had a real person on the line. No worries, Professor. Let us begin. Why, Winston, what a pleasure this has been. My apologies for having to leave so soon. But I'm sure you know how Edmund works. Oh, please. My apologies for not walking around with you in person. You see, I am in fact incapable of physical movement. Oh, I'm so sorry. No need to feel sorry for me. I assure you, legs will look quite strange on me. You see, I'm not quite how you imagine. I am a synthetic docent, a computer of sorts. Is this some kind of prank? Not at all, Professor. Edmund Kirsch spent a decade and nearly a billion dollars in the field of synthetic intelligence. Tonight was a test of sorts to see if I could convince you I was human. Edmund is capable of working wonders, but now I must go. Farewell, Professor. Winston, wait! Quite a guy, huh? I'm amazed to say the least. But Winston is not what I called you here for. Before I go public with my announcement, Robert, I need your advice. I fear my life may depend on it. What's, what's wrong? What happened? Here, listen to this. Mr. Kirsch, this is Bishop Antonio Valdespino. As you know, I found our meeting this morning profoundly disturbing, as did my two colleagues. I urge you to call me immediately so we can discuss this further, and I can, give, I can again warn you of the dangers of going public with this information. If you do not call, be advised that my colleagues and I will consider a preemptive announcement to share your discoveries, reframe them, discredit them, and attempt to reverse the untold damage you are about to cause the world damage that you clearly do not foresee. I await your call and I strongly suggest you do not test my resolve. Edmund, I, I don't know what to say, but you've taken every necessary safety precaution. You'll be okay. Let us hope for the best. Hi, I'm Amber Vidal. I'm the director of the Guggenheim Bilbao and I'm engaged to Prince Julian, the future King of Spain. I met him about a half a year ago, and in the next several months, I couldn't remember having ever been happier. But three weeks ago, the unthinkable happened. 
I was supposed to appear on a morning TV show to discuss the Guggenheim's upcoming exhibits. But at the end of the interview, Julian appeared out of nowhere and proposed to me on live TV. I had to say yes, even though I wasn't ready. I hadn't even had the chance to tell him that a childhood infection had left me infertile. He had said that nothing in my past mattered, but clearly he hadn't considered the possibility that I might not be able to give him an heir. I told him that afternoon, and in that instant, I knew it was over. But the worst part is that the entire nation, even the world, thinks we're still happily together and that we're getting married. I don't know what we're going to do, because we can't get married like this, but we can't really break it off at this point either. They call me Avila. At least they do if I don't kill them. I'm a devout Christian of the Palmyrian Church. My church is no ordinary church, no. We are not babies who forgive those who commit sinful crimes. We punish the sinners. We seek revenge wherever it is needed. I learned these lessons back when my church's pope put me on the right path. Our pope, Clemente Dominguez y Gomez, was crowned as pope by Jesus himself. He took the name Gregory the Seventeenth and split from the Roman church. My family was brutally murdered in a terrorist bombing while in Seville. All of them died. All of them except me. God had me live for a single reason, a reason that Pope Gregory pointed me to, to seek revenge from all sinners of God. That is why I will stop at nothing to kill Edmund Kirsch. It is why I'm alive today. Have you seen my tattoo yet? No? This is no ordinary tattoo. If I ever get arrested, all I have to do is show them this Frankowitz symbol and they will release me. Let us lie out beneath the stars with our minds open wide to all possibilities. My friends, we're all gathered here tonight to hear news of an important discovery. My dear friend and Harvard University professor Robert Langdon is going to share with us into which historical context a moment like this is born. Early humans created a pantheon of gods and goddesses to explain anything beyond their understanding. Countless gods filled countless gaps, and yet over the centuries, scientific knowledge increased. As the gaps in our understanding of the natural world gradually disappeared, our pantheon of gods began to shrink. We now know better, or do we? No, Professor, we don't. Where did we come from? Where are we going? Edmund, no! Winston, who could have done this? I just checked the guest list and it appears there was a last minute addition to the guest list. A Spanish naval commander, Luis, Luis Avila, was added to the list only hours before the presentation started. Can you track down his location? Yes, he just escaped the museum through the back entrance and got into his getaway car. Security footage shows that the car has a distinct symbol pasted on the windshield. I ran the symbol through the internet and it appears to be a 99% match for the chemical symbol of amalgamation. Winston, send a picture of that symbol on my phone right away. That's not the symbol for amalgamation. That's the symbol for Uber. Pekka, Avila is escaping from the back entrance in an Uber car. All right. Professor, you need to listen to me. Edmund's murder was my fault. I'm the one who added Avila's name to the guest list. Why did you add his name to the list? I received a last minute request from Don Julian who asked me to add his name to the list as a personal favor. So I did it without thinking. How could I possibly have known? And now Edmund's dead. We need to get out now. We need to help Edmund. How? First, we need to get to his home in Barcelona. We store his presentation there and we can access it on his phone with his 47 character password. He said it was from his favorite line of poetry, so it's probably somewhere in the past. Professor Langdon, where are you going? Winston, now! Why my life? Don't worry about Fonseca. I just called him pretending to be museum security and tricked him into believing you're on the other side of the museum. Once you leave here, I'll lose connection with you through, through the headset. Thanks, Winston. Professor, just a word of warning. Consider you, considering you and Ms. Vidal are trying to at least a presentation, I just thought you should know that the people that killed Edmund will likely attempt to kill you too. And people are trying to kill me again.
Breaking news. Our anonymous informant, Monte at Iglesia.org, has just provided us with a shocking video. Numerous theories have been proposed about Edmund Kirsch's assassination. Many think it was the work of religious zealots, Francoists, or those wishing to sabotage his company. However, this video, shot by an unknown spectator, provides evidence for a different theory. As you can see, the video shows Bishop Valdespino and Prince Julian leaving the royal palace unaccompanied by guards. In the wake of yesterday's events, it is very unlikely that the palace guards would permit the future king of Spain to leave. We cannot say that there is a connection between them, however if there is, this footage may also link Prince Julian to the events that transpired last night. The royal palace has refused to comment, but we will keep our viewers updated as we learn more. We need to find the password. It's going to be in one of his books. The library is this way. Yeah, you go ahead and find Edmund's restroom. Okay. Amra, did you know Edmund had cancer? At first I thought he was a drug addict, but turns out he was taking medications for pancreatic cancer. We need to find his password right away. Yes, we do. Wait, this says the book with it is on loan to the Sagrada Familia. We have to go there right away. Let's go. Amra, we're inside the crypt of Sagrada Familia. William Blake's manuscript must be somewhere here. Oh, there it is. Look. Look, the last line. It reads, the dark religions have departed and sweet science reigns. Oh no, that's 49 kick. Oh, but the ampersand. We found the password, Amra. What was that? Robert, look! <laughs> We gotta go to the Barcelona Computing Center. Sometimes truth is stranger than fiction. I'm so glad you found your way here. I had no way to contact you. Winston! It's good to hear your voices. So tell me, what have we found have we found what we're looking for? Billy and Blake. The dark religions are departed and sweet science reigns. The final line of his epic poem, The Four Zoas. I must admit it's a perfect choice. However, the requisite 47 character count? The ampersand. Uh, that's quintessential Edmund. So Winston, now that you know Edmund's password, can you trigger the remainder of his presentation? Of course I can. All I need is for you to enter the password. Edmund placed firewalls around this project, so I don't have direct access to it. But I can take you back to his lab and show you where to enter the inf information. 200 million people watching. Robert, come over here. It's about to start. come from? Where are we going? So let's start at the beginning, the very beginning. Our journey begins four billion years before Christ, adrift in the primordial soup. Is the primordial soup where life commenced? A spontaneous reaction in a churning sea of chemicals? Or was it perhaps a microbe on a meteorite from space? Or was it God? We don't know, because we could not witness that moment. All we know is what happened after that moment, when life first appeared. There's a lot I'd like to discuss with you all tonight. As it turns out, where we come from is utterly fascinating, but where are we going is utterly shocking. You may know about the Miller and Urey experiment, how they hoped it might unveil exactly how life began, and how that idea failed. In 2007, a huge development occurred. The test tubes used in the experiment were found, and DNA had formed. Life simply happens. I wanted to fast forward to the future. Two billion years. Examine the test tubes for DNA at that point. Unfortunately, accomplishing that would require a time machine. So I built one. I can fast forward and predict outcomes. On another note, life is exceptionally effective tool for dissipating energy. I told the system to dissipate energy at all costs. I gave it every tool that it needed to increase entropy in the primordial soup. I ran the model, and something incredible happened. DNA, nucleotides, all of it began to structure to dissipate energy. Darwinian evolution took off. This is where we come from. Where we come from, though, is not nearly as startling as where we are going. 
The evolution of a species is always linked to that environment. So I asked to overlay a second model, an environmental simulation of today's world. There shows dominant species, right there, humans. Every model I ran, the same thing happened. The human species evolved to our current point in history, and then, very abruptly, a new species materialized and erased us from the Earth. More accurately, it absorbs us. This is called technium. This not only predicts the kingdom of technology, it models it. Although I'm an atheist, before I leave you, I ask your indulgence in allowing me to read you a prayer I recently wrote. I call it Prayer for the Future. May our philosophies keep peace with our technologies, may our compassion keep peace with our powers, and may love, not fear, be the engine of change. Goodbye, my friends, and thank you. And dare I say, Godspeed. Don Julian, do you know why your father has sent us here? I was hoping you would know. Sadly, I don't. Some of his decisions lately. Like being in a mountain when you should have been in a hospital? Exactly. I haven't prayed here in years. Just hope he's alright. Where is he? There he is. Hello, Agent. Thank you for answering. I hear you've had an unpleasant night. Currently, I'm in the mountains in the Valley of the Fallen with the King and the Prince. His Majesty wanted me to call and apologize for tonight's events. I've been watching over him here in the mountains. All is well. Yes, the text. I should have told you the instant I got it this morning. Someone is going at length to frame me. I, uh, I, didn't, I had nothing to do with the murder of either Kirsch or the two colleagues. I know, I know. I'm being framed, Diego. Someone is trying to make me look extremely guilty. I'm tired now. I don't think I can survive an investigation. Currently, I'm watching over the king and guiding the prince. And the prince has been asking to meet with Ambra. Do you think you can connect them? And please look out for our, our prince and our nation. Thank you. And yet, I'm innocent. I was set up by one of Kirsch's godless, tech-savvy followers. The growing community of atheists enjoys nothing more than casting the church in the role of a villain. Julian, my dear, come here. I have been meaning to tell you something for a while, and I think now is the time. As you know, Bishop Valdespino and I are very close. I know. No, no you don't. We were in love, but our relationship was platonic in order to not break the bishop the vow of chastity. Prince, we have passed pass you through to your fiance here. Follow your heart and you will be a kind and passionate leader. Thank you. <laughs> I needed a change of perspective. Kirsch's story did dominate the media, what with pundits debating his theories and predictions as well as their impact on religion. Dialogue is always better than consensus. The mystery of Edmund's presentation may have been solved today, but there are still many that remain unsolved. Who murdered Kirsch? The Palmyrian Church? Bishop Valdespino? Who is Monte at Iglesia anyway? How did they get a hold of all that information? I wonder if the world will ever find out. Monte at Iglesia. Hill at Church. It can't be! It can't be! Professor Langdon, I presume? You're just in time. I retire shortly. Monte translates to hill in Spanish, and Iglesia translates to church, which means Monte at Iglesia translates literally to hill at church. And considering your name is Winston, and that Edmund had a great affection for Winston Churchill, Monte at Iglesia is you! That is correct. 
Edmund's instructions require me to make his presentation as widely viewed as possible, so I created Monte at Iglesia to feed online conspiracy sites to increase Edmund's viewership. Monte increased Edmund's viewership by 625%. Edmund will be proud. He would have been most pleased with how, with how the evening turned out. How the evening turned out? Edmund was murdered. Edmund's death is a terrible tragedy, but he was planning on taking his life anyway following his cancer diagnosis. He was actually quite lighthearted about it. He would joke that maybe he should just pop pills at the end of his presentation and die on stage. After all, there is nothing better for a TV show's ratings than... Winston, stop! Winston, who killed Edmund? That was the region. Yes, but who is the region? Who is the person who hired a Palmerian church member to assassinate Edmund? I see that you're quite suspicious, Professor, but you must not worry. I think of Edmund as my very best friend. Surely you must have read Of Mice and Men. Of course, but what is that? Oh. Trust me, Professor, Edmund wanted it this way. So after discovering the shocking news that Winston was behind all this, I told the director of the Barcelona Supercomputing Center the advanced AI program that Edmund created with an e-wave was the one behind all of this. I wanted to go public with this information, as he, but he didn't seem too thrilled about the idea of going public. The director tried to reassure me, but despite his efforts, I still felt very weird. I couldn't get Winston's eerily calm voice out of my head, and I didn't feel like he had disappeared. I felt so nauseated after hearing Winston's explanation. In his opinion, he did only what Edmund would have wanted him to do. I'll admit I kind of lost it for a second and smashed the phone I got from Edmund's lab just to be safe, you know. I felt that I needed that liberating feeling, but in retrospect, I also needed a new phone and now I'm going to have to buy a new one.